Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Armen, Professor Armen Astval Satrian from Yerevan, Armenia. And you're on the Dr. Y channel. So today we will talk about uh, tests and clinical case in pulmonology. So the questions that can be on your big exams. So if uh, so, today's uh, yes, today's today's uh, questions are about acute bronchitis. So if you find the question of acute bronchitis, uh, so on your in your exams tickets, on your exam tickets, you will answer like this. So for example, what is acute bronchitis? Acute bronchitis is inflammation of tracheobronchial tree commonly following an upper respiratory infection that occurs in patients without chronic lung disorders. The cause is almost always a viral infection. The pathogen is rarely identified. The most common symptom is a cough with or without fever and possibly sputum production. Diagnosis is based on clinical findings. Treatment is supportive. Antibiotics are usually unnecessary. Prognosis is excellent. So normally it is largely enough. Largely enough. No, maybe we can talk about that acute bronchitis is viral in more than 95%. It's almost often. Uh, almost often. Uh, often part of an upper respiratory infection. Diagnose acute bronchitis mainly by clinical evaluation. So we have to do chest X-ray or another tests only in patients who have manifestations or more serious illness. So treat most patients only to relieve symptoms. So that's clean, classically almost. So because we have no more times to um, evaluate all knowings about each topics of every student. And it's largely enough. But who knows? Maybe, for example, uh, so professor... It might be not me, of course, huh? or one of the jury can ask you a question about etiology and pathophysiology, pathogenesis of acute bronchitis. Uh, acute bronchitis is an inflammation of bronchial tube, as we understand, which are the air passages that carry air to the lungs. It's usually caused by a viral infection, such as common cold or flu. In some cases, acute bronchitis can be caused by bacterial infections or exposure to irritants, such as smoke or pollution. So here are some of the most common uh, causes of acute bronchitis. So take pens, uh, papers, and write uh, what I want to what I want to say to you. So viral infection, viral infections, the most common those causes. The majority of cases of acute bronchitis are caused by viral infections, and that's rhinovirus, influenza virus, and respiratory syncytial virus, RCV. Syncytial, maybe syncytial virus, maybe uh, pronunciation like this. Syncytial virus, SRV. Bacterial infections, although less common, Acute bronchitis can also be caused by bacterial infections such as mycoplasma pneumonia or bordarella pertussis, so so-called whooping cough. Or don't forget about irritants, exposure to irritants such as cigarette smoke, uh, air pollution or chemicals can irritate the bronchial tubes and lead to acute bronchitis. So uh, actually it can be trigger of acute bronchitis. Allergies, yes. Uh, allergies to pollen, dust, or other environmental allergens can also trigger acute bronchitis in some people. Also, we've got pre-existing conditions. People with pre-existing respiratory conditions, such as asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, at, are at the higher risk of developing acute bronchitis. Other factors. Other factors that may increase the risk of developing acute bronchitis include age. This is a pediatrics problem. Eh? Young children and older, uh, oh, young children very often. But also, also older adults uh, means 
aged persons, 65 plus, are most, uh, more, success, more susceptible. So susceptible ages are young, very young actually children, and uh, 65, 75 plus adults. Overall acute bronchitis, overall, is usually caused by viral infection. That we have to understand. Huh? We have to understand that. But bacterial, bacterial uh, infections and exposure to irritants can also contribute to development. But acute bronchitis, bronchitis, sorry, it's a viral problem. Okay. So if there is a question like, for example, classification, yeah? Yes, classification. I had a question like this, huh? So classification, clinical laboratory, and functional diagnosis of acute bronchitis. Uh, my dear friends, acute bronchi bron uh, bronchitis, bronchitis can be classified based on the cause and the duration of the symptoms. So the most common classification system is, so actually this is a viral infection and we understand that just by history. But anyway, no question like this exists. So viral acute bron bron bronchitis, these types of bronchitis is caused by a viral infection. That's why it's a viral bronchitis. Usually the same viruses that cause the common cold or flu. Symptoms usually last one, ah, two weeks. Bacterial acute bronchitis. This type of bronchitis is caused by a bacterial infection such as mycoplasma pneumonia or Bordarella pertussis. Whooping cough. Huh? Bacterial acute bronchitis is less common than viral acute bronchitis and may require antibiotics to treat. So, another classification. So, viral, bacterial. Then, acute exacerbation of chronic bronchitis. This type of bronchitis occurs in the people. So, AECB. AECB. So, acute exacerbation of chronic bronchitis. And this type of bronchitis occurs in people with pre-existing chronic bronchitis which is a long-term condition characterized by inflammation of uh, the uh, bronchial tubes. So this is exacerbation is usually caused by a bacterial infection and may require antibiotics to treat this one. So this is over-infection, super-infection. Then environmental acute bronchitis. Environmental acute bronchitis. This type of bronchitis is caused by exposure to irritants such as smoke, Fumes or dust in the environment. Environmental acute bronchitis usually resolve, resolves once the irritant is removed. Allergic acute bronchitis. This type of bronchitis is caused by an allergic reaction, such as allergy to pollen, dust, or other environmental allergens. Allergic, uh, allergic acute bronchitis usually resolves, my friends, once the allergen is removed or treated with medication such, for example, antihistamines. It's important to know that acute bronchitis can also be classifi uh, classified based on the severity of symptoms, ranging from mild to severe. It happened. However, the above classification system that I said, viral, bacterial, acute exacerbation, environmental acute bronchitis, and allergic, allergic bronchitis. Uh, well, uh, so uh, this classification is more commonly used in clinical practice. In clinical practice. So etiology, etiological, if you want a classification. So if you find the question like this, huh? Uh, Clinics, my friend, clinics, uh, 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 it's not um, quite correct form of the question about symptoms and signs, clinic signs. So if you find clinic means symptoms and signs. And symptoms and signs of acute bronchitis are a non-productive or mildly productive cough 
accompanied or preceded by URI symptoms, upper respiratory infection symptoms, usually by you no know, five, seven days. Very rare, two weeks. Huh? So five, no, we, we know this infection. Every one of us get this problem maybe several times a year. So usually more by more than five days, subjective dyspnea results from chest pain or tightness with breathing, but not from hypoxia. It's a not a hypoxia. Signs are often absent, but may include scattered ronchi and wheezing. Sputum may be clear, may be purulent, or occasionally contains streaks of blood. Sputum characterization, characteristics do not correspond with a particular etiology that is viral or versus bacteria. Remember that. Mild fever may be present, but high or prolonged fever is unusual and suggests influenza or pneumonia, so over infection. And this is your problem. On resolution, cough is the last symptom to subside and often takes, we have to understand that, two or three weeks or even longer to do so. It depends on preconditioning situation. <coughs> but remember one thing, I suppose is a principal thing. Acute cough in patients with asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, bronchiectasis or cystic fibrosis should typically be considered an exacerbation of the disorder rather than simple acute bronchitis. Okay, exacerbation of these conditions. Uh, diagnosis. Mm, diagnosis of uh, acute bronchitis. Clinical evaluation and sometimes chest x-ray to exclude other disorders. But in everyday practice, so we have to understand that in everyday practice, we don't send everybody to chest x-ray. Clinical evaluation, no history, clinical evaluation, of course. Actually, we can say that clinical evaluation is the base of all diagnosis, of course. But this is the principle for, uh, actually the principle for all, for all diseases. But anyway, you answer clinical evaluations and why not? Sometimes chest X-ray, and why? Why X-ray? Not for to diagnose, but um, to exclude other disorders, severe disorders that can be gone with or like acute acute bronchitis. Huh? So we have to understand that this is the basis of clinical evaluation. Huh? So acute bronchitis is inflammation. The name, huh? uh, bronchitis. Idus, bronchitis, idus means uh, inflammation. What of bronchi? Means of bronchial trees, which can be caused viral and sometimes bacterial infections, environmental irritants, and other factors above mentioned. So the diagnosis of acute bronchitis is a typically uh, based on the presence of symptoms, the clinical evaluation, such as cough, cough, chest discomfort, and shortness of breath. Along with examinations, findings such as wheezing or ronchi, abnormal, abnormal, abnormal breath uh, sounds. In addition to the clinical evaluation, laboratory tests and functional tests may be used to aid in diagnosis of acute bronch bronchitis, to exclude other disorders, of course. Huh? These tests may include, no, of course, exclude, of course, chest x-ray. Well, if you do nothing, no. Why not do chest X-ray? So a chest X-ray may be ordered to rule out other conditions, such as pneumonia or lung cancer, which can cause similar symptoms to acute bronchitis. Bronch cough. So you do this, once again, not to establish or fix diagnosis, rather to rule out other severe conditions. Well, first of all, of pneumonia, actually. Okay. Uh, then uh, PFT. PFT is a pulmonary functionary test. Uh, pulmonary function is PFT. PFTs are a series of tests that measures lung function and can help identify whether the bronchitis is obstructive or restrictive in nature. 
This test includes pyrometry, which measures the amount of air a person can exhale forcefully, and lung volume tests, which measures the almost of air in the lungs. Well, the, the sputum culture, sputum culture may be performed to identify the presence of bacteria or other organisms that may be causing the bronchitis. Uh, sputum is the uh, sputum culture may be, sputum is the mucus that is coughed up from the lungs. And actually it can be a, a lot of things in there. Uh, if bronchitis go without any uh, complications, no. no, anyway, sputum culture, why not? I think no temperature, no fever, why? Blood tests, uh, blood tests may be ordered to check for, for, for signs or infections, such as an elevated white blood cell count, no, of course, any inflammation go with that. And C-reactive protein, CRP levels, now it's very fashionable. Uh, uh, so viral testing, viral testing uh, may be performed to identify the specific virus that causing the bronchitis, but no one do that, and it's normal. But anyway, you are on viral testing. This can be done through a variety of methods, including including polymerase chain reaction testing, viral culture, or serology. So, oh, uh, what else? Ah, yes, well, my friends, it's important to note that laboratory and functional tests may not always be necessary for the diagnosis of acute bronchitis. They're rare. And should be ordered based on the individual patient's symptoms, so severe symptoms and clinical presentation, of course. Treatment for acute bronchitis typically involves symptom management, just symptom management, with over-the-counter medications and rest and antibiotics may be prescribed if a bacterial infection is suspected. What else? Treatment. Yes, no, of course, let's do the treatment. Treatment. We have the one that on treatment and prevention. Of acute bronchitis, symptoms relief. Uh, that is acetaminophen, hydration, uh, possibly uh, antitussives. No, anyway, not uh, no way. Acetaminophen is for it, uh, for example, it's the most common prescribed drug. Actually, it's over the counter drug. Inhaled beta agonist for wheezing, but uh, be very careful with that. Acute bronchitis is otherwise healthy, in other, in other words, healthy patients is a major cause of antibiotics uh, overuse, and we have to understand that. Nearly all patients require only symptomatic treatment, such as acetaminophen, acetaminophen or uh, and hydration, detox, so-called. Evidence supporting efficacy of routine use of other symptomatic treatments, such as antitussives, mucolytics, and bronchodilators is quite weak. Antitussives should be considered only if the cough is distressing, or interfering with sleep. It happened, but rare. Patients with wheezing may benefit from inhaled beta-2 agonist, for example, albuterol, for a few days, but be careful with that drug. Huh? Broader use of beta-2 agonist is not recommended because adverse effects such as a tremor, nervousness, and shaking are quite common. So anyway, my friends, treat, more treat, most cause. Yes, yes, yeah, I understand. Yes. Ah, we have time. Ah, uh -huh. okay, okay. But actually, uh, not a good. there are the questions. Anyway, treat most cases of acute bronchitis in healthy persons, healthy patients, or otherwise healthy patients, without using antibiotics. Antibiotics we can use if we have we see complications. The most common cases without antibiotics, please. So that's all uh, about questions uh, of, uh, of what? Acute bronchitis. God bless you. See you in another lecture. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and follow the channel. See you in another lecture. Bye-bye, my friends.